Yeah, this is my first trip to, uh, to Egypt, and I'm really impressed. I'm impressed with uh, the mindset of the people. They're very environmentally conscious here. I started off as a dolphin trainer. I started actually capturing dolphins and training them. Today, I try to educate people about dolphins, and in particular, the dolphin captivity issue. The popularity of the Flipper TV series probably had a lot to do with this multi-billion dollar dolphin captivity industry and in fact the dolphinarium that's here in Borgata. As soon as I found out that there were four, actually nine, there were nine coming here, four already arrived and five were scheduled to come here from the Osaka airport, I showed up. And uh, I'm sure this community doesn't want anything to do with the traffic and captive dolphins from Taiji. But unfortunately, if you have dolphins from Taiji and you're profiting from that, you are part of the problem. You are supporting this large dolphin slaughter. Well, thank you so much for coming. Uh, it's really important that people in this community see this film because um, it's my educated guess that these dolphins that you have in your community are from Taiji. You saw the violent capture. That's how the four dolphins that are here were captured. And so now you are connected to Taiji. We don't know what the fate of these four dolphins is. They're, they're in very bad shape. They're living in a villa. And I'm going to go out on a limb and predict that they will die in the desert if they're not taken out of there soon. And any of the tourists coming to this wonderful community can see dolphins in the wild. Why in the world would they buy a ticket to see a dolphin in a hole in the ground in the desert. So I'm a dreamer, as I say, and I'm dreaming of the sending these dolphins back to Japan with the message, thanks, but no tanks. So this is the illegal dolphinarium right here, and they're trying to get this dolphin out of here in four trucks. They know we're here now, and the owner of the Dolphinarium just called for a meeting with me, so let's go see what he has to say. We're just waiting now outside the villa. Uh, we managed to get Frick in. He's having a conversation now with the, with the dolphin owners and some doctors from the Quarantine Authority. Dr. Mohamed Hanafi also is inside from the, uh, the advisor of the governor. He's also inside and I think this is what's making it safe now for Rick to go into the villa. The four dolphins are in the boxes. They are uh, in good uh, weight. I'm very surprised to see that. I thought they were underweight and malnourished, but they have apparently been fattening them up because they're, they're fat. Since there is no shade for them, they are at least keeping the, the skin wet and humid.
Western Sahara Desert, we have oil, camels, and dolphins. Kind of like camels in Kyoto. The community can help in many ways. First of all, they can um, start to talk to tourists about why we don't want to go to a dolphinarium and why we don't need to here in the Red Sea. We're very fortunate in that we have lots of wild dolphins living on our doorstep that you can go and snorkel with and watch, observe in their natural habitat. We're going to now um, launch a massive campaign to try and ban this particular dolphinarium and to prevent any further dolphinariums from opening up. We hope that we are now educating tourists and locals alike in, as to why dolphinariums are cruel and very unnecessary. Guys, our problem is not the four dolphins. Our problem is a corrupt industry that is corrupting every single agency that is happening. Our next move now is with alliance with the Ministry of Tourism, with the Chamber of Travel Agencies, two international Nickerman, Thomas Cook, every single operator who operates in the Red Sea, we're trying to issue a commitment from them that there will be no selling or propagating or marketing for any facilities this way or Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.